Hey guys, it's time for another episode of the QC Show. My name's Chris, and I'm here with my friend and occasional co-host, Quan, where we talk about life, our experiences, and how we got to where we are today. Join us. Hey, Quan, how's it going? Hey, Chris. Pretty good, man. Pretty good. So now that you're, you've flown back, flown back to uh, California, I'm imagining that you're in quarantine. Is that right? I'm in a self-quarantine. This part is going to sound a little unbelievable, but it's what happened. I got off the plane, right? I'm at SFO. All the airport staff are wearing masks, right? They just let us walk through. So I walk through, and then I walk over to immigration. I don't even do the passport scan. I just walk up to the counter where they, like, ask you, like, where did you come from, right? I said Taiwan, right? Everyone's wearing masks. So they asked me, where did I come from? I said Taiwan, right? I'm going through customs. I don't have any baggage to pick up. I have my I have my backpack for my computer and then my backpack for my clothes. And I just kind of walk to the end. And then the officer asked me, so where where did you come from? I said Taipei. And then he asked me, how much uh, did you buy anything from Taipei, right? Yeah. And I, th- I said no. And then just like one other simple question. And then he just said, yeah, you're good. Go, you know, you're good. And so I just go right through and then that's it. Wow. There was there was no temperature check. There was no th- th- there was no like rigorous screening in any way. Like they just looked at my passport and they basically waved me through. It was it was pretty incredible. It's almost like there was no pandemic except everyone was wearing a mask. That's pretty bizarre. Yeah, it's like going to Sogo in Zhongshan Fuxing in Taipei. Yeah. It seems like they care more about the COVID <laughs> than the San Francisco International Airport. You know what I mean? It, it, they were just so casual about it. It's, it was weird. And, and why do you think that is? Is it possibly because they knew you were coming from Taiwan and Taiwan seems to be doing quite well right now? Or I'd like to think that's exactly what it is. Maybe they just, they have more time to prepare for each plane that comes in. And maybe they're like screened heavily, like in some way that I don't know about. Like maybe they just screened those flights really well and then they assume that Taiwan did a good job with it so that they don't question it later. I really don't know. Maybe if I'd come, maybe if I'd come from Europe, maybe they go a little harder, I don't know. Right, I, I read somewhere that um, some of the airports in North America were struggling to buy the equipment, the, the temperature, um, you know, the, the camera sort of sensors you know, where you walk through and there's a screen and, and 15 people are on the screen and each of them has their temperature kind of floating over their head. Have you seen, you saw those when you were here? Yeah, I saw those when I was in Taipei. But yeah, I, I think that makes sense. Maybe uh, the airports yeah. can't afford this equipment. But it, do, it does seem kind of important. So yeah, it's pretty surprising, man. It does. I think the problem was that, it, you know, the, this equipment has to be manufactured. And it's all been sold basically is what I, what I read. Right. And, you know, so it's not a matter of that they can't afford it, but it's just not available to buy until they make new ones. And the thing that I thought was kind of funny is in Taiwan, it's like they're using them everywhere, you know, so you're just going to the mall and they've got this, you know, this really high tech camera um, and the screen. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if they manufacture them in Taiwan and then they just sold there first, but. Um, they're everywhere here. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's like you go into a restaurant in Taipei, right? They do the little temperature gun. They have that little temperature thing they put to your forehead. They didn't even do that. Yeah, that's weird. That's really bizarre. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess there's different understanding of it, too, in the sense that perhaps, uh, you know, the temperature isn't the only signifier. I think the cough, you know, having a cough is probably something they m- might be looking for. Or, or maybe they, is it possible that they did actually have the technology, but they don't display the, the screen? Like it's somebody in a back room that's looking at the monitor. There could be, Chris, but man, it's like SFO is kind of an old feeling air- airport. It doesn't seem super modern. Right. It's like when you go to Singapore, when you go to Taipei, even when you go to Vietnam almost, they seem more modern than the San Francisco International Airport. I doubt it. It really feels like they just didn't bother screening. So then there was no talk of a mandatory quarantine? Nope, not at all. Did they say that you should do a a (laughs) self-quarantine? They didn't even say that, Chris. 
So you're you're basically just doing the quarantine on your own. Yeah, basically. And so what's that like? What day are you on right now? I guess I would be about a week in. Okay. But I'll, I'll tell you this though, man. It's like, I'm not really, it's just not really a quarantine almost. I'm, I'm still just kind of going out and stuff like that, but I'm staying away from like basically my elderly relatives. Right. Right. But I mean, geez, I've been to Taco Bell a few times. I've been to Walmart. I've been to Target. I've been wearing my mask. So I, I can't truly say that I've been self-quarantining, but I guess I've been quarantining away from like some of my relatives. Yeah, you're just aware of the fact that you took a flight and being precaution, uh, taking precaution. Yeah, yeah. It's not a true quarantine. I, I can't say I'm quarantining. But you feel fine. Yeah, yeah I, I feel fine. So anyway, I left the airport, right? And I usually take the subway. I take the BART, the bar, uh, the Bay Area Rapid Transit to get back to where my uncle is, right? Okay, yeah. And yeah, it was surreal because like, for one thing, there were more homeless people than I've ever seen, almost. Oh my God, like since the last four months. Yeah. It, I, usually you get maybe like one guy begging for money walking, you know, down the aisles, right? I think there were like four this time. Uh, on the BART. Yeah, on the BART. So, like, there would be one, and then they'd, they'd kind of uh, they'd uh, beg, and then they'd go off, and then they'd beg, they'd go off. There were, like, four of them. And the crazy thing is it's surreal, right, because they have their sign, right? But they have also, like, a fresh mask on, like a fresh sur surgical mask. Okay. So, like, everything, you know, they're homeless, but they have, like, this clean-looking mask on, and they're still, you know, so uh, it was surreal, man. Oh, that is weird. And were you, and you were wearing a mask. Yeah, I was wearing a mask. I, I, you know, I got to say, everyone was wearing a mask. All ethnicities. You know, it's like that whole melting pot thing. But everyone was wearing a mask. So uh, everyone was kind of on the same page, I feel like. Everyone wasn't... Everyone was trying to sit, like, a certain distance away from each other. Right. So it, it does feel like, you know, like, people in the Bay are kind of working together, right? They all kind of realize the danger. Did you expect that it might be different? How do you mean? Well, you know, we've been hearing a lot in the news how there's people who refuse to wear masks and these kind of obnoxious situations where, where people just put their foot down. And, and you know, there was a story um, yesterday, I think, where, where somebody refused to wear a mask and, uh, and then they just urinated on the floor. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's still some crazy people around. So did you feel that there might be a little bit of that when you when you got home that, it, you know, might be like a bunch of people don't wear masks and then other people are? Or are you surprised that everyone is like whenever I'm in Taipei for a while and I'm reading the news and I come back, I always have that experience like, oh, it's not as bad as the news portrayed. Right. And so, yeah, I did get that feeling here. But yeah, I'm, I actually am a little surprised. Because there's still crazy people, but the crazy people are wearing masks, right? And I've been back for a week, and, you know, everyone I've seen has kind of been wearing a mask. Everyone's kind of being nicer to each other, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, I guess it's not the kind of news that makes headlines, right? But I think for the most part, at least in here in Sacramento, like, everything's kind of chill. Everyone's kind of... Um, everyone's kind of working together, it feels like. People, you know, people are nice to each other. You do see the plexiglass screens everywhere you go, like at, in front of the cash registers, right? Okay. Like I went to Target to return something, and it's almost like they had a bulletproof glass set up. Wow. If, if you know what I mean, right? They have the little yeah. holes so that you can get your money back or you can give them your card or whatever. But other than these setups and everyone wearing masks, it's like everyone does kind of feel nicer. I don't know how to say it, but it's nice, man. I know um, I was wondering when I left Taipei how it would be. And yeah, it's really not that bad, man. It's nice to, it's nice to see Americans, you know, coming together. <laughs> Good. Yeah, no, no, totally. Because it, it, does, it does sometimes portray a different story, you know, in the, in the media. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's it for another episode of the QC Show. Thanks for listening. And remember, leave comments and we'll be sure to read them and get back to you.